This is the Power Macintosh 7300-200. Though some describe the case as boring, maybe even ugly, this is one of the best designs ever to come out of Apple, simply for the way this Mac comes apart. So today I'm going to tear it down and show you what's inside. Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So, um, today I'm going to be talking about one of the most amazing designs Apple has ever made. And it's this thing. Well, it's the computer that this top case was on. It is the Power Macintosh 7300-200. And this design is amazing not for the way it looks on the outside, that's pretty standard beige box for the time, but for how it comes apart on the inside. So, uh, let's get right into the teardown and I'll show you what's inside. To open the machine, just press the two latches on the front of the top case, pull it forwards, and lift it away. Looking at the inside of the top case, you can see the two plastic bars that lock the top case on when the latches are not pressed. Next, you can remove the thin metal plate that covers the CD-ROM drive. It should pull off straight forwards. You can then open the plastic cover on the left, or just let it fall off if the hinges are broken like mine. Next, use a spudger or other small, strong plastic tool to pull the clips back and slide the top disc mount forward slightly. Unplug the two hard drive cables and one floppy cable, and then slide it the rest of the way out. On it, there is an Apple-branded 2GB Quantum Fireball SCSI hard drive and a Matsushita-made Panasonic floppy drive with no Apple branding at all. The CD drive can be removed by pulling up on the latch on the bottom of the drive and then sliding it forwards. Again, unplug the three cables going to the drive and then slide it all the way out. This CD drive is branded as an Apple CD-12X, but the text, Manufactured to Apple Specifications, indicates that the drive may not be made by Apple. The fine print on the label confirms this, saying that the drive is actually made by Matsushita, like the floppy drive. After that, you can slide back the locks on the case and lift the drive and power supply section upwards. Make sure the plastic foot is out so that the section stands upwards. You can then carefully lift the section up and rest it at a 90 degree angle from the motherboard. Next, you can remove the main RAM by pushing down on the small black locks and lifting the stick out of the slot. VRAM is removed by pressing on the black lever and then lifting the stick out like the main RAM. The cache has no latch, you just pull on it. This is not an easy thing to do, but it does come out eventually. My PowerMax RAM configuration is standard, with 32MB of main RAM along with 2MB of VRAM and 256KB of cache. Next, you can unhook the connectors for the top section. They vary in shapes and sizes, and some are more difficult to pull out than others. You don't have to remember where these go, as it's impossible to put them in the wrong connectors during reassembly. To remove the processor card, pull straight upwards on it. Like the cache slot, there are no latches to hold it in, but it's stuck in a bit more tightly than some other cards. While it might look like some sort of a graphics card, this is a 200MHz PowerPC 604E 32-bit CPU card. While it does seem possible to disassemble the card further, it will be left in one piece during this video. Before removing the motherboard, you must disconnect the speaker assembly. There are two small cables connected to the front of the motherboard that slide out towards the side of the computer. Next, insert a screwdriver into the plastic tube in the center of the motherboard and remove the screw at the bottom. Do not twist the tube with your fingers as you risk damaging the plastic tabs on top. You can then slide the motherboard forwards, unhooking it from the case before carefully lifting it out. You may have to move it around a bit to get the connectors at the back out. The top of the motherboard is relatively devoid of large chips, but the bottom is home to many large ICs from VLSI, Texas Instruments, and even one from AMD. Under where the motherboard used to be, you can see that either the case or the computer was manufactured on March 11, 1997. The final major component to remove is the power supply. With the drive and power supply section down, remove the screw behind the unit and then slide it back towards the front of the case. Lifting it may cause the case to lift with the power supply, so to prevent this, slide the lock you opened earlier back into place, holding the case down. The power supply should now be able to be carefully lifted straight up, taking its cables with it. Make sure none of the cables snag on the case and lift it away. This PSU is a 150 watt supply from Delta Electronics, a company that still builds the power supplies for iPhones today. Like the floppy drive, it is without Apple branding. So, that's what's inside the 7300-200. From the way that the top of the case opens to access the drives or the motherboard underneath, to the way that the top case comes off with just two little buttons, to the way that the entire computer comes apart with just two screws, and most parts can be upgraded without any at all, this is truly one of the most amazing case designs Apple has ever made. Not for the outside of the case, but for the inside. So that's it for today. Dory is still a very, very small channel, so if you want to see us grow, then please subscribe, and until next time, bye.